Actually, it's uh, Richard, and oh, I'll, sorry, Richard. I'll go through the, through the questions. Thank you so much for a, a very good presentation, Scott. We do have a couple of questions, and I thought I'd, I'll go through them, and maybe you can give us some insight. Uh, first asked was, uh, are path loss 4.5 and 5.0 files available yet? Uh, we actually are working on path loss. I think the question is referring to the um, radio uh, profiles that can be loaded into path loss for use by path loss. They are not yet available. We are working on those, um, anticipating roughly 30 days. Uh, and you can either go, whomever's asking the question, can go back to Richard in roughly 30 days or reach out to me directly, and we'll let you know as soon as those are available. In the interim, if you would like a link planned uh, for four or five, and uh, forgive me, I forget the other band that was being asked, uh, in path loss, we can assist you with that either through street wave or direct. Uh, we do have path loss here uh, at Motorola for just that purpose. Great. Okay, and the next question is, what is the maximum distance from the ODU modem? Um, between the compact modem unit and the ODU, uh, the maximum distance is going to depend uh, in part on what type of cable you're using. Uh, if you, I can either send to you the user's guide or you can download it from motorola.com backslash ptp and it'll provide you the specific metrics to answer that question. Great. You, you um, depends on it whether you're using LMR 400 or LMR 600. Um, we didn't go into this too much, but obviously licensed bands are more expensive than some of the unlicensed bands. How would I justify the expenditure of the licensed band and what benefit does it afford over the public non-licensed frequencies? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, a licensed band radio is going to uh, provide you a higher level of competence that, from an RF standpoint, you're not going to be interfered with. Uh, and that, that's the single biggest benefit, is that you're operating in a band that is protected um, from interference. It's not to say you won't be interfered with, because it does happen, but you have a venue through the FCC to correct that interference, uh, should it be sustaining. Uh, that's the single biggest uh, benefit to going to a licensed band radio. Um, one of the, I guess, downsides to licensed band is that you can't uh, deploy in the non-line of sight or near line of sight model. So depending on what kind of link you're trying to establish, line of sight may not be even available to you, or the spectrum that you require to, to establish the link may not be available because you, you would be interfering with another party that's already got a license in place. And I think that's part of the beauty of, of Motorola's portfolio in that we can support both unlicensed and licensed. And it's, you know, we don't have a vested interest. We, we sell both. Our approach would be, well, what's the best solution for you in that particular application? Great. And Streakwave provides both the licensed and unlicensed versions for anyone who's looking. Next question has to do with the link planner. We are offering a path analysis, and Motorola has a link planner. They want to know, is the latest version of link planner available? And when you're completing a, a tentative design, is that the right thing to use? Uh, so, so the latest version of link planner is available. And again, you can download that for free from Motorola at motorola.com backslash PTP. Um, but uh, given that Richard offered to do that for free, I might encourage you to give Richard a phone call uh, and ask him to run that path for you. Uh, just uh, for clarification, I sped through the number. If any of you want a path analysis, you can do so at 888-604-5234 or come through us on streakwave.com. Next question is, um, how do I obtain, very similar to the question that was just asked, as to how do I obtain the necessary licensing and for how long is a license effective? Okay, good question. And, and there's really three steps to that process. Uh, the first step is, is you're going to plan your link. Uh, so you're going to you know, establish your XY coordinates for the, the transmit, or the two sites, I should say. Uh, you're going to you know, plan it, make sure you get the performance that you require, the bandwidth, uh, right, the band that you anticipate using, et cetera. Make sure you get a clear line of sight. Um, do a, a virtual walk of that link uh, using Link Planner. That, that's step one. Step two, once, once you're satisfied that your link is planned appropriately to provide the performance that you require, uh, licensing requires particularly in the U.S., requires you go through a coordination process. Uh, Motorola does offer uh, a license coordination service uh, that is available through Streakwave as well uh, 
as a quarterable SKU. And Link Planner will spit out a report with all of the necessary data for license coordination. Uh, basically, what license coordination is, is is the preliminary step to actually applying for a license. And it's the process by which um, a third party will ensure that your proposed link at the proposed band is not going to interfere with any other pre-existing or in-process license uh, links. And it, the output of that will be validation and assignment of either a, a channel or a subband for your specific license. Once that process is complete, and it's relatively quick, um, you, you would then apply for your license through the FCC. Um, and again, the service that Motorola provides can handle that on your behalf, or I'm sure Streetwave can, can facilitate that as well. Um, and then depending on which band you're licensing, um, there may be additional criteria or requirements. For example, 6 gigahertz has a bit density requirement that you have to maintain. Uh, 38 gig, on the other hand, is a geographic license rather than a point-to-point -point license, which most bands are. But broadly speaking, it's a three-step process. You plan the link, you coordinate the link, you license the link. Great. And, and as you said, we're more than willing, StreetWave is more than willing to help you with the licensing procedure. Uh, next question, can frequencies be easily changed in the field? In essence, uh, longer term uh, temporary applications. Well, uh, let me answer that two ways. Um, if you're going to deploy a license band, you require a license. Uh, so e even on a subband, you would have to change the license in order to do that. So presuming for the moment that you want, for argument's sake, let's say you want to move from uh, 11 gig to 18 gig for whatever reason, you would first have to, and assuming that you had an 11 gig license in place, you would first have to go get the license for 18 gigahertz for that same link. Uh, once that's accomplished, uh, you would have to replace the ODU, the ODU element, as, as well as in all likelihood the antennas associated with it. Uh, so physically it can be done using the PTP 800. Uh, presuming the licensing has been taken care of and you're prepared to make the incremental investments in the ODU and antennas. If, if it's a temporary link, and temporary has different definitions of time, you might consider using a license exempt radio rather than a license radio for that particular application. And again, you can plan that using Link Planner or, or Richard um, and StreetWave can facilitate that as well. Just um, at the sidebar. Have... Uh, we actually do have quite a few customers, and this is pretty common in the carrier space where they're rapidly building out their 3G and 4G networks where they can't get licenses fast enough uh, just due to the, you know, the regulatory process. So they'll deploy initially using license exempt uh, 5.4 or 5.8, get the link up, they'll bring uh, capacity to whatever site they're looking to bring capacity to, bring that site up, they're, they're in business, and then once their um, license comes through, They'll go back in and they'll replace that license exempt radio with a licensed link and move the license exempt radio to the next location or use it for redundancy. Um, you had mentioned um, something about line of sight and the needing of line of sight um, with the PTP units. Will these units penetrate through small trees and other small obstructions? Okay, so uh, the, the reference to line of sight was in the context of licensed bands. And it's not unique to Motorola or Motorola PTP 800. Uh, from a regulatory standpoint, if you're going to use a licensed band, 6, 11, 18, 23, um, you're required to have line of sight with no Fresnel zone interactions. Um, so that's just, you won't get a, a license coordinated um, or won't be granted a license if there's obstructions to that path. The, the PTP 500 and 600, on the other hand, using multiple input, multiple output, and OFDM are designed to operate in a non-line of sight and near, near line of sight environment. So if you know you have an obstructed path um, or expect to have an obstructed path, that might be a better approach for you. Next question is about uh, getting more information about the particular products that we're talking about. They ask, are the data sheets available for the equipment with all technical specifications uh, for each band, and where would you find it? Yes, we, we um, I don't know, good, better, and different, we probably publish the most comprehensive spec sheet for licensed microwave in the industry. If you, again, go to uh, motorola.com backslash PTP, you can download a single spec sheet uh, that includes uh, 
all of the relevant specifications uh, on each of the bands that I referenced. Uh, there's also brochures and other pieces of information, but the spec sheet itself does have um, performance and channel bandwidth expectations by modulation for all of the bands. 